Good morning, River Hills Church. It's good to gather together on this Sunday on July 12th. And just a little heads up, I'm headed out on vacation this week. Um, but uh, Pastor Allison and the rest of the crew have things well under control. If you need anything, do not hesitate to contact the office or one of them, and everything will get handled. Um, thank you for coming together. If you're visiting us with it for the first time, uh, an extra special welcome. We're glad you are part of things. If you have not gotten on our um, email list to receive our Friday e-news or the, or the announcements, um, please let us know how we can keep in touch with you because there are lots of great things going on in the life of this church, including Mindful Mondays on Monday evenings, some socially distanced way to connect. There are also some, some reading groups um, where they're doing a book study uh, of, around race right now, and we would love to have you be a part of that. Um, and don't forget Vacation Bible School every Wednesday throughout the summer. It's good to gather together. It's good to be the church. So let's come together for this time of worship. On this day, as we celebrate, I invite you to open up your minds. We're going to be talking a little bit about uh, how we uh, set and get ready for the growth that God intends and wants for us. So I'm going to just plant that little seed right there and, and give you an opportunity to reflect and, and think about that as we begin our worship today. May the Holy Spirit be in this place wherever we are gathered, where two or more come together in his name. He will be with us. Let us enter into this time of worship. Let's join together in our first song. It's hymn number 539. We're going to sing the first and third verses of O oh, Spirit of the Living God. O oh, Spirit of the Living God, the light and fire divine, descend upon thy church once more and make it truly thine. Fill it with love and joy and power, with righteousness and peace, till Christ shall dwell in human hearts and sin and sorrow cease. Teach us to utter living words of truth which all may hear, the language all may understand when love speaks loud and clear, till every age and race and clime shall blend their creeds in one, and earth shall form one family by whom thy will. So what's on your hearts today? What is it that you want to be able to come together in, and be in an attitude of prayer? What are the things that are holding you back? What are the things that are challenging you? What are the things that come to heart and to mind when we pause for this moment to lift them up to God? I invite you to be in an attitude of prayer to lift up those in your life who are hurting, who are lost, who are lonely. Be with those. Be with those in spirit that you cannot be with in person. Let's find this time and join our hearts together in prayer. Let's join together first in our community prayer. Let us pray. Help us, God, to cultivate that which would nourish our souls. For every soul belongs to you, O Lord, as well as to your Son. The soul who sins is one who will die, and we sin when we nourish our souls with the things of the flesh. Teach us not to fear. Fear that which can kill the body and yet not touch our souls. 
but rather to fear the one who can destroy both soul and body. Create in sacred soul space, O Lord, the yearning for that which only you can bestow, the hidden manna available to all who overcome in the name of Jesus. Let us continue in prayer. O oh, gracious and loving God, help us to seek out the good soil that you call us to, to plant ourselves in so that we might grow, that we might be able to take root and find nourishment in this earth, that we might receive that which we need to, to grow strong, and solid and powerful in your world. Lord, there are so many things that can distract us, that can keep us off balance. So many things that add to our busyness that we fail to put in the roots or we get easily carried off by others and fail to grow. But Lord, it's not only our own growth that we pray for today. Lord, we pray to be the good soil. We pray to be the ones who can cultivate the earth, that can break the ground so that the things that will take life may have an opportunity to grow. And yes, Lord, there are things that can seem to grow right by our side that do not belong. Help us to discern the difference between that which is fruitful and that which chokes us and keeps us from being that which you call us to be. We lift all of this up to you, O oh Lord. Guide us, we pray, as we share together the prayer that Christ taught his disciples, as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's good together, to gather our hearts together in prayer. And without further ado, it's been a long time since I've done one of these, but I need some kids! Come on, come on down a little closer, a little closer. Oh, come on, you're right in here. We're going to talk a little bit. We're going to talk about the parable that Jesus tells his disciples. It's, it's about sowing seeds. Have you ever planted a seed before? Have you ever been a part of helping Maybe a parent or grandparent or a friend put seeds in the ground and watch them slowly grow. When they first come out, you can hardly tell what they are. But in time, they become exactly what they were intended to be. There's no mystery there. The seed grows the plant. And the plant, whatever that seed is, is what the seed brings forward. I've got some good news for you. You are one of God's seeds. 
God has planted a seed in your life that God knows exactly, exactly what's in store. Now, Jesus reminds the, the people that are gathered that day that, you know, not every seed grows up. There are some seeds that get scattered and they don't even get into the soil to grow. They're, 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 the birds come down and pluck them up and eat them and off they go. They never get to be what God wanted them to be. And there are some that fall in the rocks and those grow too quickly, actually. They, they grow so fast that the roots can't soak into it because they're on a rock. You know, rocks, you can't put a, a, a root in a rock. And those plants... Because they need their roots. They need that, that, that place to, to get the nourishment from the soil and the water from the rain so that they can grow up so strong. Because their roots can't go into the rock, they wither up and die. They never get to be what God intended them to be. And yes, there are some too that actually might grow and might grow in soil, but then there's weeds that grow up around them and those weeds kind of choke them off because the weeds take what the other seeds need and they can't grow. So Jesus tells the people that are listening, those that can hear, you know where the best place to plant a seed? Go ahead. What do you think? What's the best place to plant a seed. Oh, some of you, I can hear you say, in a flower pot. Yes, that would be, because that has good soil and, and we can tend it and take care of it. Yeah, or a flower box would be a good place too, or a garden. Places that, that we set aside to make sure that the plants grow, that we want to grow. Jesus said the seeds are kind of like the Word of God. Yes, you might have thought this was a Bible, but it's actually a book of seeds. Seeds that can grow in your life. Will you have good soil so God's seeds can grow and become exactly what God wants them to become in your life? I kind of like to think of church as one of those gardens. Those places where New seeds can be tended and cared for. Some of us have been doing this for a while. We're still not perfect at it, but, but we sure can help. Help find new ways to grow. That's my prayer for you today. Let's pray together. Oh, gracious God, we give thanks for the seeds that you've planted in our lives those seeds of joy and truth, those seeds of faithfulness and love, those seeds of faith. Help them to grow strong roots in our lives so that they might grow into exactly what you want them to be and others can enjoy the fruits and the flowers. We lift all of this up to you, O oh Lord. Help us to grow. Help us to help one another to grow. We pray this in your name. Amen. Yeah. Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. Full in the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Good morning.
This morning's epistle reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. There is, therefore, now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin, he condemned the sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not of the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also though his spirit that dwells in you. Today's gospel lesson is from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 to 9 and 18 to 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into the boat and sat there. And while the whole crowd stood on the beach, he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and he sowed. Some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, And they sprang up quickly, but since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what is sown on the path. As for those who have sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what is sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as far as who is sown in the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, another 60, and another 30. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's come together now and reflect on these words, on this parable, and the depth of the Roman passage about where we set our mind as we share in this hymn, You Are the Seed. the seed that will grow a new sprout you're a star that will shine in the night you are the yeast and a small grain of salt a beacon to glow in the dark you are the dawn that will bring a new day 
you're the wheat that will bear golden grain. You are a sting and a soft, gentle touch. My witness is where'er you go. Go, my friends, go to the world proclaiming love to all. Messengers of my forgiving peace, eternal love. Be, my friends, a loyal witness from the dead I arose. Oh, I'll be with you forever till the end of the world. Let us pray. Lord, may the words from my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So I, I do know a few things about planting seeds. I, I can't say I've ever been a, a gardener of sorts, and those who know me know all too well that to, to give me a potted plant is, well, just a recipe for disappointment. I tend to get so busy that I do not care for it the way I ought to. Denise Potter oftentimes gives us a poinsettias at Christmas time, and she has learned that with that gift comes tending that poinsettia so we can enjoy it all the way, all the way till Christmas. But I grew up in Iowa. I grew up with one side of my family on farms and the other side of my family, well, let's just say he might as well have had a farm. He was the kind of person my grandpa brought who would have gardens in everyone else's yard, including his own. People who had had gardens and had gotten too old or frail or, or just distracted and disinterested who no longer wanted to care for their own garden, he would quickly offer to, to pick up the load, to do whatever he could. And yes, he was as generous with that produce as you could possibly imagine. Always more than he and my grandma and the rest of our family could possibly enjoy. He knew how to plant seeds. He knew how to make good soil. He was a gifted sower. I still remember those times when we would go uh, to, uh, to the gardens. And some of them were a couple blocks away from his house. And so we oftentimes would uh, find a, uh, a piece of fruit uh, from the kitchen before we took that long walk. And when we took that walk, we would eat that peach or the that cup full of cherries or whatever they might be along the way. And, and at the time, Grandpa always encouraged us just to throw the pits or the seeds into the garden once we got there. I can remember one time going with him. It was way too early to, to pick any produce or to harvest anything. But, you know, to have good soil, you need to make sure that you pluck the weeds. I can still remember being in that garden, pulling out weeds when I discovered some of those very seeds and pits that we had spit into the garden were actually growing. I was amazed. I was like, Grandpa, look what I found. That peach that I had eaten actually started to grow. And he would smile and he would say, well, the problem is it's not where it's supposed to be. So we need to pull it out. I think in Grandpa's own way, 
he had a way of sharing with us an important lesson in life. That there are lots of things that will find root, but they don't all belong. And that we need to be careful about where we cast off what we thought was, were the remnants of something we might have once enjoyed because it might take root in the very place we don't want it to. When Jesus turns to his disciples to share the story, he's talking about those words. Those words that come from God. Those words that God plants in our heart and, and wants us to be the good soil so that they might grow. The problem with being good soil is other words might grow too. Sometimes they're words of discouragement. Sometimes they become words of gossip or cynicism. These kind of words can take root in our life just as easily as the good news can. And they can choke us out. They can make it difficult for us to, to be the kind of faithful people God wants us, wants us, intends us to be. You know, the funny part about reading this story this week is that when Jesus started, started telling the story, did you catch how he got into the story? Before he even started talking about those words, before he even began to share that parable, it's good for us to understand the context. It says that same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. I love that thought because, quite frankly, we're headed out on vacation. There's going to be times when I'm going to need to get out of the house. I know what that's like. I, I, I know that, you know, while it's good to be home, it's good to have a home, it's, it's good to be in the company of family and friends, you and I both know sometimes we just need to get out of the house. Even Jesus needed to get out of the house. And, and when he did, he sat by the sea, my kind of guy. He sat by the sea. And what happened when he got out of the house and he sat by the sea? You got it. The people started coming. They started gathering around. In fact, it got so crowded that he no longer could sit by the sea. And he says, it says here in Scripture, such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there. So Jesus went from sitting in the house to sitting by the sea to sitting in a boat. Where are you sitting these days? Where do you choose to sit? Is it a surprise that with this sort of progression of where Jesus would sit, that he starts talking about planting seeds, sowing those seeds, where will they set? Where will they grow? Go ahead, look around. Where are you sitting now? Where will you sit this week? Where might you find yourself sitting? I think that's important. I think it's important in many ways because that's where we are present. That's where we find ourselves, and we need to pay attention to that. Jesus sat in three places and then reminded the people that where you plant your seed is so important. The Romans passage doesn't talk about physically sitting, but it does talk about setting our mind on things of the Spirit, not things of the flesh. 
It's a whole different sort of setting ourselves. So when I look at the passages today, I think about places we sat, places we sow, and places we set. And so that's my encouragement from the scripture today. Is to ask yourself the question, where will you find yourself this week? Where will you sit and where will you set? Will your mind be on the things of the heart or the things of the flesh? How do you suppose that's going to divide up for you in your life? Are you spending more time sitting? Sitting in places that simply take care of the physical things in your life? Or are you taking time to grow your soul? To allow the words of God to, to catch root in your life. To find a time where the roots can grow because that takes time. You don't want to wait to the last minute to try to grow roots. It doesn't work. Are you spending some time this week planting seeds in the good soil? How about the things of the heart that Paul speaks about in Romans? Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is my challenge for you. Don't just sit around, but plant the seeds God's calling you to plant in your life so that the new things might grow, might grow so that they might take root and give you new life. They might be able to prepare you to do what it is that God's calling you to do. So where will you be sitting this week? Where will you be sowing this week? And what will you be setting your heart and mind on this week? These are the challenges today. May God add greater understanding to this word. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we give thanks for this journey that we are on. We love those moments in which we can really relate to Jesus. Getting out of the house to sit by the sea. When the crowds gathered, he got in the boat. Kind of sounds a little Minnesotan. Lord, for that we give thanks. And the joy, the joy that Jesus took in sharing the story about the sower to the crowds that gathered this day. Lord, may that story grow also in our own hearts that we might learn from it. We pray this to you, Almighty God, in Jesus' name. Amen. So, let's take time now to consider what it is that we're going to, to give. It's not just about getting, it's about giving. And God never asks us to give that which we cannot give. God never asks us to give more than what we have. Let's take this next few moments during the offertory to, to reflect on what we have been given, to give thanks for it, but also to ask, where is it that we need to be about the work of making good soil? Let us take time now to reflect on this during our offering.
Thank you, Kathleen. Let's join together in our closing hymn as we bring this time of worship uh, to a conclusion. Let us sing hymn number 707, the hymn of promise. Brothers and sisters in Christ, go forth. Go forth in this new day, in a new way. Go and allow the words that God has planted within you to find a new life and go and help prepare and be the good soil someone else might need so that their seeds might grow good fruit. Go forth. Go forth in peace. Amen.